clicking on this video, you may or may not know that I made 2024 the year that I was going to try to eliminate at least 30% of my physical TBR. As I looked at my physical TBR, I realized that majority of my physical TBR is made up of series. Logically, I looked to the series and I saw which books that I just had like one more to finish. If there's just one more until the series is done, you might as well read them. So then we have today's video. Today I picked up three different books that were finishing a series, whether that's just like the series is finished or whether it's an ongoing series, but it's what I have on my physical TBR left of the series. Whatever it may be, today we're finishing series. Let's get into it. I've been reading this book for months now. I picked this book up back in December and then I feel like every month I have been making like 10% progress. So like in January I read 10% of the book and February I read 10 more percent, 10 percent more of the book. But now today I have gotten to the 50% mark. <laughs> I know, I know. I honestly deserve a medal. Like, you know how like when you get a marathon, you get a medal? I deserve one for making it to 50% through this book. It is so wildly different from Divine Rivals. It feels like the same book in a way. It doesn't because I... My dog is going crazy right now. I've said this somewhere. I've either said it on a video or I was said it to somebody that I was talking to about the book that I felt like since in the first book we didn't focus about a lot of the lore of the like fantasy element of what was going on because there is something going on like in the background as a plot and I remember thinking to myself that it was going to serve a greater purpose in the second book we were probably going to focus a little bit more on it in the second book because I remember like thinking that we had this like lore that we learned but it didn't really serve a purpose <sighs> we're here we have arrived at the purpose, but really it's just been like, we have been following this storyline and it's like the conflict of the story so that you don't have a conflict with characters. It's not a character driven conflict. It is a plot driven conflict that makes the characters have a conflict. If that makes any sense. I really am like back in high school trying to remember my literary devices. Divine Rivals was a little bit slower, but the romance ate in that book. The, strict poetry that they write to each other because if you guys like the like letters letters are like a big thing and th these books the letters the way that they write to each other the way that they describe each other the way that their love feels it's so like emotionally based and you guys know that i love when the romance is like emotional instead of like physical like that yearning for another soul like i love that another person like love in a loving way because that kind of sounded like I don't even know. It comes down a little grim. And that's what I loved about Divine Rivals and why I rated it four stars was because one, it's still this writing is beautiful and poetic and lyrical throughout everything down to the descriptions and the way that characters look at each other. That writing is still here, but I just feel like we are focusing so much on that element of like the lore. And I just like, I don't care about it. That's not why I liked Divine Rivals. I like Divine Rivals for the romance and I feel like the romance has taken the third row. It's not even in the back seat. It's like in a, when you got those big SUVs and you have the front seat and then you have the second and then you have the third row that like everybody wants to sit in because you think it's cool but then you get back there and you're like, oh no, this was not, I'm, I'm about to get car sick. That's where the romance is at in this book. The romance is way too good for it to be all the way back there. Like I'm 50% in and I'm getting crumbs. <laughs> the trope that we've been going with thus far, one of my least favorite tropes ever. And it's such a hyper specific trope that I can't tell you guys it, which I know is annoying. It's like if I were to tell you that a book is accidental pregnancy trope and that doesn't happen. And do you guys enjoy just looking at Charlie's butt? Anyway, my head is hurting from trying to read this book and trying to get through it. It's been an uphill battle to even get to the 50% mark, but the little romance crumbs that we've got have been by far, by far my most favorite part of the book. And some of them aren't even the main characters romance crumbs. So there is that. My goal is, is to finish this tonight. And I've always said this and I know it why, but the last 50% of a book is way faster than the first 50% because I feel like you're not building up to a story by the time you're at 50%, the last 50 is just kind of like, you know, conflict resolution, all of that good stuff. And that's my goal is to finish this book tonight.
that was reenactment. <laughs> that is my way of telling you guys that I did, in fact, finish Ruthless Back. Hi, you are about to see me in some of the later clips in today's video when I'm reading on my iPad. You are about to see me wearing these frames, and they are from none other than Pear Eyewear, who is the kind sponsor of today's video. So thank you so much to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. Listen, you guys know the deal. Don't act like you guys don't know what's going on. You watch any video of mine, vlogs, regular videos. I guarantee you, you guys are always going to see me wearing a pair of my Pear Eyewear glasses. Let me tell you guys this really quick. This is a genuine conversation that I had with my mom a few days ago. We're driving in the car. She needs a new prescription for her glasses and she was like, you know what? I really like the one sponsor that you have and how like you can switch up the top frames. Like I would really like that to have a base frame and I can switch up the top frames. This is a genuine interaction with me and my mother. Like this is like a thing. I'm telling you guys they're amazing. Let me tell you all about it. So these are my go-to frames. I absolutely love these. Again, if you see me in any video, I'm most likely wearing these. I go back and forth between these and these. Right now, I actually have a pair of top frames on. And basically the way that pair eyewear works, you go on your website, if you have a prescription, you put that in, or you pick your base frame, and they actually offer a virtual try-on tool. That way you can try it on from the comfort of your own home. You can try it on from the comfort of your bed. Let me tell you what you can't do that with. You can't go into a store and try on glasses from the comfort of your own bed okay you're gonna go into a store it's gonna it's gonna have that awkward interaction energy you know and we don't love that so I love that with pair eyewear I can literally just be sitting in my bed scroll through the website try them on see what they would look like on my face and boom add to cart but you know what else I'm gonna be adding to cart I'm gonna be adding some top frames boom that's how easy it is you just snap them on simple as that there's some like magnetic strips boom it changes the whole entire look adds some personality and the best thing about pair eyewear is that they are so affordable there are so many options for you guys as well i absolutely love pair if you guys want to check out pair eyewear you guys can visit the link down in the description and you guys are going to get 15 percent off your first pair with des reading 15 i'm going to have the link down in the description and i have the discount code right here for you guys you guys should definitely check out pair if it's not a testament enough to literally how much and how often I wear them. They're absolutely amazing. The products speak for themselves. And thank you so much again to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. Let's get into some reading. Follow me on Goodreads. You probably already saw my writing because like I just knew in my bones what this was. It really depended on what the romance was gonna do, on whether it was going to be a two or a three star. And at the end of the day, I already decided on a rating and I'll let you guys know at the end. Oh god. <laughs> Wait, I am real time checking my Goodreads to see the thing and I have 29 comments on my rating for this book. <gasps> this is so interesting because whenever I look at Goodreads, I am like reminded of how subjective reading is because a lot of you guys are very disappointed at my writing with this book. But this it just proves that like you look for different things in books and reading is so personal at the end of the day. The quote was along the lines of like, it reminds me that I cannot put others that I love in a cage even if I feel like I'm protecting them. The thing with this book is that what I loved about Divine Rivals, I said this in the last clip, I loved the romance and I loved the feeling of the romance. I feel like the reason that Divine Rivals wasn't a five was because sometimes when we focused on the other plot, it kind of made the storyline slow down so much. At the end of the day, I just don't really think that I cared about the lore. I don't think the lore and the plot of the book was interesting enough to keep my attention and I feel like the romance really took again the third row back. That kind of really affected it for me because I feel like that's what I wanted to read this for was for the romance. I love the connection between two characters. That's still true. I absolutely adore the romance in this book and it is one of my favorite romances that I've read in a fantasy book just because it is so different and I feel like it's so genuine but everything else I did not care about like the little mystery that was going on like I could not have cared less about it I feel like it made the story so 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 slow the only redeeming thing for this book for me was the romance so that is where we're at with Ruthless Vows I'm honestly just excited and happy to say that I finished it because this has been one that I keep seeing sitting over there and I'm like mm, I haven't finished it yet like I literally thought that this was gonna be one of those books that I read as soon as it came out and here we are like three months after it's released and I have been trying to read it for three months so thankfully I'm doing this video and that we're done with it Hello. 
Okay, we're in the same spot. This is another one, which I'm not saying that this book is going to be bad. I'm really hoping that we're not gonna have two of these situations back to back. Honestly, every single book, except for one of them, every single book has a possibility of severely disappointing me. So that's great. I really hope though, for the sake of everything that it's not. The next book that I'm gonna be getting into is Mother of Death and Dawn. So this is the final book in the War of Lost Hearts trilogy by Carissa Broadbent. I started this series last summer. So we're kind of going up on a year of me reading these books. I really enjoyed the first book. The second book took me forever to get through. I remember reading it like I was, oh my gosh, I remember literally just like sitting in the pool just trying to read the book and I was so confused where we were going with it because it felt like so cozy fantasy in the first book and then we just switched vibes really fast. I do remember a lot of what happened in the last book. Do I remember how the last book ended? Yes and no. I remember like a big thing that got revealed that I was kind of like, oh, this is a thick book. Let's see how many pages this is. This is, oh, it's almost 700 pages. Like, I think we're right at that 700 mark. Yep, like 705. This is gonna be a big one. This is gonna be a monstrosity to get through. I'm hoping that this one is a lot better because I feel like with the second book, one of the storylines that we were following, I feel like was really building up for this thing the whole entire time. So I was just so confused to learn like something else and like be with somebody else that we kind of had no explanation. But now that we know kind of the purpose of that serves, I feel feel like maybe this one will be a little bit better. I'm really hoping that I like this one because the first book I remember enjoying and it was very cozy and obviously we have given up those vibes. I mean, look at this cover. We're, we've given up the nice little cozy cabin, little magical vibe and we're here now. Carissa Broadbent does not mess around. I do enjoy her book. Very scared to go into this one, but I have it on my Kindle, of course. Hey, hello. This is a 700 page book and honestly, if you guys could feel it, it's pretty heavy as well because of the material that it's made out of. But um, anyway, I'm gonna start reading this. to report that I'm 50% through Mother of Death and Dawn. I never thought that I would see this day. I honestly thought that this book would sit on my shelf unread forever and I would never close the final chapter on this. But honestly, once you're like in a trilogy and you just have one book left, I'm kind of like, might as well. But when it's 700 pages long, it's a little bit of a hard thing to do. I am 50% through this book and I should tell you guys, this book has been really surprising me. I kind of went into this like, oh, I don't really want to read it because of how I felt about the last one. It has been pretty, pretty good. Like I have been thoroughly surprised with it. So we're getting three POVs in this book and I have been like in every POV that we're in, they're like so drastically different, but they tie together in one big way that you kind of like have this understanding. And in every POV that we're in, I'm like on the edge of my seat. I'm like, what's gonna happen? How is this going to all come together? Like we still have a lot of book left, like do not get me wrong, but I'm having a good time reading it. Which I did not expect. So I'm happy about that. The romance in this book, I absolutely love. Also Carissa Broadbent, her writing is really good. Like she has these poetic lines and stories that she tells. Like they are really well executed. And I literally find myself like highlighting lines in this book because they're so beautiful. Like I really, really am enjoying this. If you guys like more of a war and fighting type of fantasy, that's what you're getting with this. Like imagine like kind of like how Aka War focuses more on like the war aspect. That's what you're getting with these books. Anyway, enjoying this one. 50% through. I keep on going back and forth from reading the physical copy to my Kindle, but I just need to stick with the Kindle and then maybe we'll crack one of these open. New location, once again, unlocked. For a little reading update, I think I'm literally like almost finished the other day. I was so close to finishing this book and then my Kindle died. I could not read on my phone for some reason. 
like not that I physically couldn't but just like I couldn't like I chose not to I'm about 75% through this book right now here's the thing I feel like the last time that I was actually talking about this book I was kind of raving about it low-key I was having such a good time with it and that still rings true like I was having a good time I enjoy the characters so much in their interactions like the guy in this book like the main guy he is everything okay I love a witty sarcastic like guy he feels that like he checks every box with that like even in the worst type of situation that you can go through he is like making jokes he's like cracking jokes he's being sarcastic he's like looking at captors and being like sarcastic with them no like he genuinely is one of my favorite like male main characters within a fantasy series because i completely forgot that until i picked back up this book and realized like remembered how much that i really truly enjoy him if you've read throne of glass and you love the main girl from throne of glass i feel like you would really love this main character they give the same exact vibe if you, i mean if you've read the books you know so i also really like the main girl in this book and i love the chemistry within the romance like everything about that eats like the characters them even the storyline that is really good like the storyline in these books i think i was talking about that that if you like more of like kind of almost a little bit more like high fantasy stakes feeling then this is the series for you but here's the thing i feel like almost in these books we have a little bit too much going on in this book this book is 700 pages long and i feel like the actual plot of the fantasy is so slow moving to the point where it's a little excruciating that we have made no progress within the plot line like at all because what will kind of happen is we'll introduce kind of mission that we have to go on and there's been multiple missions throughout the book you'll get introduced to this mission and then they'll go off into a side plot that has nothing to do with the mission and kind of start focusing on these other characters which i do like because obviously you love the characters like you want to focus on them i want to move forward while focusing on them and even if we get a little off track i don't care but in this book i just feel like multiple times i feel like once i hit the like 60 ish percent mark it kind of started going a little downhill for me because it feels so slow i feel like sometimes when you hit a lull in the story it does kind of make you take a step back if things are going extremely well and if the storyline is moving fast and if the characters are great i feel like yeah you're automatically like cool like we're moving fast and then if you kind of hit a roadblock and it starts to kind of slow down a little bit I feel like it gives you the time to like look around and be bored and kind of start nitpicking stuff. I'm not nitpicking anything from the book. It's more that we're not moving very fast. I just feel like some of the things like branching off, not even just the plot, but some of the things that have been thrown in here for emotional value and just things keep on happening that I feel like just at some point you're just kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, can we just, like, get on with the story a little bit? But I am enjoying it. That kind of sounds like I'm just, like, crapping on this book. I still am enjoying it. It's just, like, right now where I'm at, definitely hitting a roadblock, definitely slowing down. Genuinely, I never would have thought that I was going to finish the series. Would look at this book on the TBR shelf over there and I would be like, yeah, I'm never getting to that. Like, that's just never gonna be in the cards for me. Then, when I thought about doing this video, I was like, literally, Destiny, you have one more book you have read like all of the books in the series are pretty thick i was like you have literally read so much world building all of this character development like you can finish the last book here we are finishing the last book <laughs> it's not even a sad part it's just this is what i mean by like character development this is such an emotional thing <laughs> oh my god I just hurt my own feelings because that is so heartbreaking <laughs> like it's not even actually a sad thing it's just like a predicament reuniting with a character oh that is so sad I just finished the book. You know, I really enjoyed the first one, which is, I think, 
Mm, I really enjoyed the first book in this series. I think I rated it like a four, more around a four star, like it was a four or above. It felt kind of like a cozy fantasy for the first like 70% and then it kind of gets more high stakes at the end. The second one was just kind of mundane for me. I just still kind of look at that one and I'm like, eh. Like I just felt like not a lot happened and it was kind of boring. This one I really enjoyed and with the ending, I like how realistic it feels within a fantasy world. I feel like it kind of ended different from regular fantasy books in a way that I really like and it was very emotional and I feel like it wraps up a lot of stuff at the end. Like you kind of spend some time getting some questions that you may have had answered, which I appreciate. Whenever sometimes I feel like fantasy series may have forgotten things that they did or said in earlier books and with this one, it just kind of wrapped up like all any unanswered questions questions you have and I always appreciate that because my mind will find something and be like wait what happened to this I yeah I'm gonna rate it a four stars I'm gonna rate it a four catch my wrap up to see if that stays that way I don't know why I do this all the time but I will like rate something and then I will take it back really even after the ending and just like the pure adrenaline and storyline I mean I've now read two of Carissa Broadbent series and I feel like she does excellent storytelling her writing is so beautiful to me like there are so many beautiful lines and it's so good and like that like she goes back and kind of fixes plot holes and I just really enjoyed them I feel like they're really good fantasy books I feel like they are not talked about enough because I really do not see anybody talk about this series or even the crowns of Nyaxia I don't see anybody talk about those and they need to be talked about more because I feel like they're really good but yeah I really enjoyed it like in looking at books on my shelves and I'm like what am I missing out on like when I kind of have experiences like this with either like reading a book that's been sitting on my TBR for a long time that I end up really loving or like this like a book that I would just kind of put off and then I finally read it and I'm like wow what other books are sitting on my shelves that I'm missing that feeling I don't know anyway I'm about to take like a small little break log some stuff on Goodreads Notion maybe spend a little bit of time on Pinterest and then we're gonna go into the next book for today's video back at it that does not sound appetizing does it? anyway on to our next book i have some suspicions about this book i have some suspicions i have some suspicions first of all suspicious and I will keep it there. There's gonna be a third book out in this series, but when I thought about this video, I was like, yeah, I just finished Legendborn last month. Of course, since like it would technically be finishing what is of the Legendborn series right now. Of course, I'm gonna pick up Bloodmarked because also it, both of the books have been sitting on my TBR for about a year now, but they have it on Libby. And any time that they have it on Libby, I'm gonna read it on my iPad. You can also get it on your Kindle, but I usually just like reading it on my iPad. I love being an iPad kid at 21 years old. Like literally just me and my iPad against the world. Second book in the Legendborn series, and I hear amazing things about this book. Like people say that they like go crazy over this book. So I'm very excited. I have a few things up in this noggin that I'm thinking are probably gonna transpire and happen through the book. So we shall see if I'm right. It's around four o'clock and I am gonna try to read for an hour straight um, and then I may take a little break. You guys don't care about me taking the break, but I'm gonna take a little break because it's nice outside. Uh, might go for a walk, might go run some errands, go pick up dinner and then I'll continue it later. Thank you, okay, thank you. I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to screenshot this because I need this just like printed out and put right here while I read this book, okay. chair I couldn't even stay awake and then I you know made the executive decision to go sit in my bed because my back hurt I go and sit in my bed and I was like yeah I'm gonna read my bed ended up falling asleep about 100 pages in <laughs> I was about to say something but that's definitely spoilery because I feel like you guys could get 
what I'm getting at here. It kind of sucks when you're doing this video because you're literally finishing series. So a lot of things that have been discussed like you can't really talk about because you get into really heavily spoiler territory because obviously if you haven't even read the series like you wouldn't know. Kind of hard to try to like talk about what I'm feeling for the book so that kind of sucks. I'm going to continue reading. I feel like we're still like really building up the story obviously because you're in the first 100 pages. Like we are not really introducing the conflict of action yet. I don't know if that's a thing actually. That was me faking it and trying to call upon knowledge that I learned years ago I haven't used but do you want to know what's crazy is that I never thought like when you're in English class the thought never crossed my mind that, like I'm never gonna use this like I never thought that like I knew hey for basic reading comprehension skills not even reading like it goes kind of the same thing for a movie like the whole entire you know like things that you learn just about writing a story like writing a good piece of work goes into obviously like when people write scripts and stuff so you kind of like use that knowledge even when you're just like in taking like a film like you know like you may use that knowledge but I never thought like sitting in my English classes like learning the stuff that I try to like draw upon up here that like I would use it now like that does go into my reviews like the stuff that I learned how to you know write a good story and stuff when I was in school I swear I use that knowledge Sorry guys, Charlie just literally burst in here like it was nobody's business. I don't know why I just went onto a tangent about how I'm using knowledge that I obtained. I feel like I look like I'm off like a 90s sitcom. Like I look like this belongs in Boy Meets World. Maybe that's why I stole it from my boyfriend. I actually bought him this. He never wore it and then I stole it from his closet and took the tags off and now I have never given it back. Hey Isaac, if you wanted to wear it, you would have and now I'm wearing it. Isaac, this is a test to see if you watch my video. I'll know if you watch this video if you text me right now telling me to give this sweatshirt back even though I'm not going to, but that's how I'll know that you watched this video. I don't ever expect to get this text by the way. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. do this thing where when I'm reading a book and going into it and I know that people really like it I will look it up on TikTok like non-spoiler stuff and with where'd the book go right here I saw people say like a general consensus that I had seen was that people will be reading the book and then they go to turn the page at the end and they're like it's over hey just had that moment I was reading and I was like oh my god and then i turned the page and we were done and i say turn the page i wasn't reading it physically i was reading it on my ipad which makes it even worse because i literally did not know when the end was in sight i do not know how to feel with this book i don't i don't know how to feel because yeah yeah and that's the sentence. I feel like the next book that's gonna come out will probably be my favorite just because of the way that this book ended all. I feel like the storyline that we're gonna go with in the next book is going to be like 10 times more enthralling to me because something about the storyline of this book, like the actual um, mission, like you know like you go in fantasies and stuff, like you have the general mission and then you go on like a bunch of side quests for knowledge or learning how to obtain power and like training and all that. The whole entire book, like what our main enemy was, like I thought it was one thing, but then I was like, wait, I, I was just confused. I think that's kind of just my own stupidity of like what the what the enemy was that we were fighting in this book because it seemed like it was one thing and then it seemed like it was this thing just i didn't know what the main objective was enjoyed all of our little side quests is what i'll call them because it's not like the main purpose of the book but it like they all had things to do with the main plot if that makes sense me being confused as to what the main plot was did scratch that a little bit where i was just like wait what is this for? Like, I was just kind of like, what, what, like, what are we leading up to? Like, the last probably, like, 50 or so pages of this book, again, I was reading on my iPad. I was being an iPad kid, so I don't really know how many pages, but it was a whirlwind of emotions, and then the end of the book, I was just like, 
Jaws on the floor, what is happening? Jaws on the floor, what is happening? Not to mention the romance in this book, I can't say anything. I actually can't say anything. I am so perplexed. I don't know what to feel. Like I am always very clear-minded when it comes to the romance in a fantasy book, but wow. I have never been put in this position in my life before. Speechless. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how to put my thoughts into words. That's escaping me at the moment. I actually do not think that I could go into another book. So I think that this is where we're gonna have to end the video. I am just, I am flabbergasted. This is gonna sound annoying, but I think I'm gonna give it a 3.75. I was gonna give it a four because I love the side characters. I love the characters, like the main characters, the side characters, kind of the found family that I feel like is in this book. I love the deep rooted history and all of the things that we talk about and discuss within this book. And I love the magic system. Like it is so amazingly unique and I really, really enjoy that. But I feel like, I was confused for a lot of the time with like the main plot. I guess in this book I didn't understand like we kind of had the thing that happens at the end of the book that we start going for so I thought okay that's gonna be the main purpose of this book is what happened at the end of Legendborn. That's what we're gonna be dealing with and it really wasn't like it would be talked about and then we would go back to this and then you know we got a lot of her finding her powers which I really really enjoyed. I guess I was just like okay so what is the main enemy of the book but then maybe there wasn't a main enemy of the book like I am just confused in that front, so I feel like since I was confused in that, I feel like that's what gets the rating from a four, but I really enjoyed this. But should I just give it a four? I'll give it a four. <laughs> With that being said, this is where I'm going to end this video because I feel like I am just so flabbergasted that I cannot even try to, you know, pick up another book right now. Let's do a quick little run through of the books that I read in today's video and what I rated them. So first of all, we started off the video with me finally finishing Ruthless Vows and closing the chapter on Divine Rivals, the duology. So finally, I can say that I finished that. Ended up giving this one a two stars. We already discussed it. I'm not going to get into to it. I'm gonna sit with my thoughts for a little bit longer because y'all are mad about this one. So stick around for my monthly reading wrap up for me to be more concise about my review. Then I read Mother of Death and Dawn which is me finishing the War of Lost Hearts trilogy and this one was a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. These books are thick like all three of them are very thick and I really did not have high hopes for this book after reading the second book. I have seen that those of you who have read this series said the same exact thing that I did because when I posted my Goodreads update for this. I saw so many people, oh my gosh, like the second book really disappointed me, but this book was so good. It was the same thing for me where I was kind of going into this with the thoughts of the second book that just wasn't the best to me. It really disappointed me. So I was kind of scared to go into this one, but I really enjoyed it. Ended up giving it a four star. It wrapped everything up very well. And it was just a ride from start to finish. I would recommend you guys pick up all of these, even though I didn't love Ruthless Vows. I feel like that comes down to a personal preference thing. Not that the book is bad. I just think that they all, well, the ratings are just personal too. Let's just keep that in mind that everything is so personal and it's about what you like in a book with characters or storyline or plot structure and timing. Like all of that stuff really plays into the grand scheme of things when you're reviewing a book and all of it is deeply personal. But I would recommend all of these, pick up all of these series. Definitely, I think they're all worth a read and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff you guys know how to do and Thank you so much again to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. And I'll see you guys when I see ya. Peace.